So now you're in the operating room, you can see your red tumor, all right? And you know there's functional tracks behind you, but you know sometimes the red tumor blows right through these tracks. And so how do you know when to stop, right? And so you'd like some real-time feedback, right? And so neural monitoring isn't new, this has been used for a very long time, but we've really pushed the envelope on what we can do, right? And this is when we start talking about things like awake brain surgery, right? Because again, safe maximal resection. How do we do a surgery where we know someone's gonna wake up okay? And these are kind of the principles here. On the, on the image all the way on the left of your screen, you see a giant tumor, right? And you see the cortical spinal tract for representation purposes, coursing right by it. The cortical spinal tract, as I'm sure you guys know, um, handles really uh, motor function, right? To the contralateral side of the body. And so in the past, right, you have a red tumor and you're either gonna say, all right, I'm gonna stop early and you leave this big rind of tumor, okay? You took out maybe, you know, maybe 60% of this tumor from a volume standpoint, but you preserve those tracks, but you left tumor, right? So let's, let's push the envelope, right? We wanna do better. Or what happens is you leave a nice little rind here, you get a good resection, but there's still, there's still tumor here. Or more commonly, you follow all the red stuff and you blow right into that cortical spinal tract and this patient wakes up hemiplegic, all right? You make someone hemiplegic and it's not good for their survival. They're bed bound basically, okay? Or wheelchair bound, they get bed sores, it's a nightmare. And so instead what we do is we electrify our instruments or we have, um, we, there's probes originally, but I'll talk about what we did here. And we're able to get close and we can trust our instruments and we can get within three to five millimeters of that tract. And now you're leaving the least possible amount of tumor while preserving someone's functional status. And that's that like perfect zone. That's where you get into that area where you're like really, you're really helping someone here, okay? Especially with a complicated tumor. And so um, traditionally, like I said, you would, you would basically operate, 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 stop, put a probe down, stem, operate, 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 put a probe down, stem until you get close enough, right? And the general consensus here is about one milliamp of stimulation is about one millimeter. So no one really inches beyond the five millimeter mark, but you could push three in some tumors, okay? So within three millimeters, that's pretty good. That's basically like, you know, a couple of layers of cells basically. And then this is also where we talk about awake surgery, which I'm sure you guys have seen videos of and probably brought you, you know, a lot of interest into this field because if you're like me, this is, this is incredible, right? So with awake surgery, there's a lot of different ways to do it, but in general, the way I do it, is you go to sleep, but you're not intubated, all right? You give you you get a sedative, okay? And you do your work, you open the skull, you open the skin, you get down to where the tumor is, and then you wake the person up. And they sit there and they talk to you. And not only talk to you, but they move their arms, right? Whatever you need them to move, wherever you're, the area that you're worried about is where you have them, you know, do the task. And so you've all seen, you know, the real glamor is someone's playing a guitar because you have a musician, you wanna make sure you can still play. Um, this is few and far between, I think, realistically. I think it's it's you know it's it's realistic for someone who's like a classical guitar player, maybe, but I think it's a, it's more for media sake than anything. But a tumor like this is super important. This is right in the motor strip, all right. And not only that, it's on the dominant hemisphere, right? Ninety percent of people are right are left sided dominant for language. And so what you do here is you wake someone up and you have them talk to you and they perform certain tasks, tasks of repetition, tasks of visual naming, tasks of sentence completion. And you map out areas where when you stimulate, they stop talking, all right? And you preserve those areas. And then you're able to get an incredible resection like this where you, know, you preserve that language area, right? And it's a combination of an anatomic resection and also a functional resection. And look, the MRI is not going to look perfect, but again, if someone can't speak after a surgery, you've done them an extreme disservice, okay? Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you liked that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.